60% of all pets will develop cancer at some point in their life. This is a huge statistic and pet parents need to know what we can do to help your pet avoid becoming a statistic. I'm Dr. Katie Woodley, the natural pet doctor. This is our weekly coffee talk with the doc. And today we're talking about a really sensitive subject, not only for me, but also for pet parents all over. We're talking about cancer, but specifically lumps and bumps. So those things that pop up on your pet, your dog, your cat, usually it's more common in your dogs, but what does it mean? And how do we prevent it? And how do we help your pet live a freaking amazing life, right? That's why we're here. We want them with us for as long as possible. So let's talk about lumps and bumps. And I want you all, as you know, if you've been following me and you are here every week, make sure you pop those questions in down below in that Q&A box, in the comment box, and we'll make sure we answer your questions as they come along. So lumps and bumps. Almost every dog starts developing lumps and bumps, especially as they get older. So what does it mean? Most of the time, these are gonna be benign little lesions, meaning that they don't cause any harm. Sometimes what can happen is they cause mobility issues if they're in like the armpit area or if they're somewhere on the limb where it inhibits mobility and range of motion. So that's, if it's a benign thing, doesn't spread. It doesn't go anywhere else. It doesn't cause any problems, um, but it may inhibit movement. Now we can have also what we call malignant lumps and bumps. Malignant means that it can spread. So this would be something like um, mast cell tumors. Those are really common lumps that can pop up on your pet. And the scary part is that it can look the same as say a lipoma. So lipomas are the fatty lumps that a lot of pets will get, and they can get ginormous. I actually removed, surgically removed one years ago from a dog. It was in his abdomen. We actually thought it was something more sinister, and it was 25 pounds. It took three of us doctors. Like I was holding the thing up in the surgery room, and the other doctors were you know, removing it and tying off blood vessels and things like that. So there's definitely uh, a lot of types of masses. And when we see these lumps and bumps, the first thing that I hear from pet parents is like, oh, well, we just watch it. Like, you know, the vet told us it's not anything to worry about. We just watch it. One of the things that I think about when I see lumps and bumps that clues me in that there's something off with the body. There shouldn't be a lump or a bump forming, right? It's a sign of an imbalance. And why is there an imbalance in the pet? And that's for us to figure out why we need to dig deeper. So we can watch and monitor, especially if we've already had it ruled out. So making sure you take your pet to the vet. If something new pops up, always take them in. Always have it checked out because there have been times where we will see like we think it's a lipoma, we think it's like a little sebaceous cyst, and those are all typically benign and don't cause any issues, other than cysts sometimes will like break open and get secondary like bacterial infections. However, I've seen those supposedly benign lumps weren't checked out. They weren't, they didn't have a fine needle aspirate, they didn't have other tests done, and it's actually a mast cell tumor. And mast cell tumors can look like anything. They can be big, ugly, weeping, grow really fast, shrink, change size, or they can just sit there and they look benign and they don't do anything. However, those mast cell tumors have a lot of histamine in them. And that histamine creates inflammation, it's irritating to the pet. And also depending on the stage of the mast cell tumor or the grade, it can actually go internally and spread elsewhere to the body. So this is why it's very important, any change in your pet, you need to take them into the vet, get them checked out. When I say get them checked out, if your vet says, yeah, let's just monitor it. No, let's do a fine needle aspirate and make sure we're drawing out some cells, looking under the microscope, because we need to know that it is benign. And then the next step would be something where we're looking at, okay, why are the lumps and bumps forming? That's not normal. When we look at them from a Chinese medicine standpoint, 
we look at chi, blood, everything moves together through the body, through those meridians. And if we have an imbalance somewhere in that chi, the blood, the energy is not moving the way it's supposed to, it backs up. So I love using the metaphor. It's like water in a river, right? We want it to be flowing nice and smooth. We don't want too much because then we can have flooding. And we don't want too little because when that water dries up in the river, we start getting little pools, stagnation. So pools form, right? We have these little pools that don't do anything. They just sit there and they usually get really gross and yucky and you can get like algae and they're just gross, right? It's not clean water. That's what happens in our bodies when the energy, the blood, there's not enough blood. If there's not enough chi being formed to circulate throughout the body and it stagnates. And when it stagnates, we can start seeing symptoms like pain, masses can form, lumps and bumps. So when, when we say just monitor it, we need to be doing other things to make sure that we are treating the root cause and the imbalance that has led to those lumps and bumps, if that makes sense. So we don't always want to just sit back and say, you know, it's not doing anything. It's not growing. It's fine because there's something off. And when we don't treat the thing that's off, it leads to other problems. And I see it every day with patients where they have these little cysts, they have these little lumps and it's like, oh, it's just a lipoma. I'm like, okay, but why is the lipoma there? And my concern then is too, is I treat a lot of senior pets and they have osteoarthritis and pain. And those are signs that we need to use herbs. We need to use the right food to help resolve those imbalances, get the blood moving, get the chi, get the energy. We want to talk about it from a conventional medicine standpoint, allow the body to reduce inflammation and take the nutrients from the food to create the things the body needs. So that's really important. I saw a couple of comments come up. Let me go back to them. Um, so holistic health with Roz. Love some information on natural support. So we are going to talk about some natural remedies that you can use because we do that every week when you join us. And then pet, pet, and um, you posted a product I have not heard about, um, which could be interesting. So I will have to look into that one. And then, okay, Rocky, super dog, this is a great question. So let's start off with the thing I love the most. And if you've been following us, you know where my mind is going. And we're going to talk about food. So Rocky asked a question, which is better for dogs, homemade food or kibble? And this is a loaded question. And the reason why is that, yes, real food is better. But real food in an unbalanced homemade diet is worse than a balanced kibble diet. And that's the hard part. So, so many people are like, I want to feed real food. And they start making these recipes and they're like, they're going off of how we feed ourselves. And the downside with that is, is our pets need more calcium. They have different nutrient requirements. And so a lot of these pets, they're not receiving the vitamins, the minerals, the nutrients that they truly need. And then what we've done is now we've created more imbalances and down the road, that's going to cause more health issues. So I always say work with someone when you are changing the diet, when you're going to a homemade diet, make sure you're working with someone that knows how to formulate a balanced home cooked diet for whatever is going on. We do food therapy. We can use food as medicine and we can use foods. So if your pet's really hot, so let's talk about the dogs that tend to form lipomas. So not every dog's gonna fit this category. Every pet is an individual, which I love because then we treat them as an individual with different types of herbs and what are their imbalances. But the stereotypical dog with a fatty lipoma is overweight. They're, they've got more fat on them. They are slower usually and they overheat more easily. And lipomas are a form of what we call phlegm in the body. So dampness, damp heat typically and that resolves or that results from that imbalance where maybe they aren't eating the right food and that food isn't circulating and being made into the right things that that body needs and now what's happening is it's stagnating 
and the body's making like this yucky dampness that's like sticky and phlegmy and it it's inflammation. That's what it is. That's what it is in conventional medicine. So I can talk all day about Chinese medicine terms, but it's also all about your, I'm, I'm seeing Yasmin, pick is all green, but sound works well. Okay. If people are following on Facebook, let me know if it looks okay to you guys. Cause I just want to make sure it's my video, not Yasmin's. Thank you for sharing that Yasmin. Um, so with these lipomas, they're phlegmy, they're, they're in, in, there's inflammation in the body. And so what happens is it's stagnating out and it's forming this lump. And they can be really hard to get rid of when we're looking at just using the topical things. If we're looking at um, using topical medicines, if we're using food, it can take a while and we may not get rid of it. So that's where we can potentially have to go and do things like surgery. Okay. Thanks, Sue. Thank you, Jen. Looks good on Facebook. I appreciate that. So Yasmin, it may, you may want to go in and out. Okay. So back to things. So thank you for technical following through technical difficulties. So when we talk about surgery, a lot of people here are like, I don't want to do surgery on my pet. Like how do we avoid surgery? I am the same way. I felt, I felt the same with my pets in the past and there is a place for everything. And so in terms of doing surgery on your pets, we do it when it's necessary. So if we have a lipoma, we have this fatty lump, if it's in an area, if it's small, we can monitor it, but we need to fix that root imbalance. If it's bigger or it's in an area where there may be issues, we need to surgically remove it because they can get bigger. But the key thing is, and a lot of people, they think when we remove it surgically, what happens is we're taking away this tumor, right? But we didn't fix the environment that allowed that tumor to develop. So we remove it and they're like, well, I did the surgery. And then all of a sudden all these other things popped up and it's because we didn't fix the environment in the body. So that's where it's essential that when we look at these masses, that if we aren't doing anything to fix the root cause, the underlying imbalance, we're going to have more masses. We're going to have more issues. So Sue, this is a great question. So she asked, are lymphoma and cysts different? Yes. So lymphoma is going to be more of an internal, uh, it's your immune system cancer. And we usually diagnose lymphoma because we feel lumps on certain areas of the body and those are actually lymph nodes. So we see the lymph nodes get really big because the body's working over time. Um, the white blood cells aren't being produced in the right way. The immune system is a wreck. And so we'll see lymph nodes pop up in the front, right in front of the shoulder blades, the prescapular lymph nodes. We'll also see submandibular just behind the jaw, the angle of the jaw is where you can feel. Now we have to keep in mind there's salivary glands in that area too. And so if a pet has inflammation in its mouth, has dental disease, those lymph nodes right here can be inflamed for other causes. So if you feel them and they're super easy to feel usually, so a lot of pet parents will feel and go, oh my gosh, my pet has lymphoma and they don't. So you can feel in front. The other good area that we tend to feel in large lymph nodes is right behind the knees. So that's the popliteal lymph node. So that's what we're looking for when we see like skin lumps and bumps. Yes, we can feel lymph nodes. That's going to be an internal cancer. And that's where we treat that very differently from like, say, a cyst. So a cyst, common thing, most common lump and bump or lumps and bumps that I would see would be lipomas, your fatty tumors. Those are typically benign. We'll come back to those. And then cysts. So they're like the smaller little, usually they don't have hair on them. We call that alopecic. They are possibly like red, but they're not typically ulcerated. So broken open, oozing, crusting. But with cysts, a lot of times, so we can see follicular cysts. And it's where that follicle is pretty much like flipped upside down. It's ingrown and it can create irritation and it's still producing sebum, that oil that hair follicles produce, but it's impacted. 
And so sometimes what we'll see is they break open, they might ooze like white, gross, chalky material. Um, they can get secondary bacterial infections where we have to treat them with antibiotics is the traditional way to treat those. Um, so cysts are gonna be benign, but they still represent an imbalance. They still shouldn't be forming. And if you have a cyst that's creating a lot of problems, it's breaking open, we do have to surgically remove that because we need to remove that hair follicle to get rid of it. But keeping in mind what I just mentioned, like is the food right? How do we change the environment in the body so this doesn't continue to pop up? So that's really, really important. Now there's things that we can do topically to help with secondary infections. Um, we just did a, a series on essential oils and using essential oils topically in a carrier oil, diluting them, but using certain ones for their antibacterial properties. So we can use topical. Manuka honey is another great option that has antibacterial properties that you can use. It's not going to make the cysts go away. It's not going to treat the underlying problem, but it's nice because we can hopefully avoid having to use antibiotics um, and affect the microbiome. So affect the GI health, which is usually one of the main reasons why these are forming because the GI system is not optimized. It's not optimized because the food we're feeding isn't appropriate. Now going back to lipomas, I've had a question about can lipomas turn into a cancerous lipoma? So lipomas are technically a cancer. So we have our benign and we have malignant. Benign means that it doesn't spread. So it just kind of sits there like lipomas are the fatty little lumps and they just sit there. And so um, I have a feeling Sherry you just asked, what are soft fluid like pouches under the skin that move? I'm wondering if you're talking about the lipomas. Um, so that might be something around there. They don't seem painful located around abdomen rib cage. Um, so it depends, like I can't comment on what exactly that is that you're feeling, but a lot of times those will be li lipomas or fatty lumps and bumps and they can form anywhere on the body. Like I mentioned, I removed a 25 pound lipoma surgically from a dog's abdomen. Like they can be internal, they can be on the skin, usually they're on the skin, that's the most common area, but they don't tend to turn cancerous. So the lipoma is not gonna switch and shift and then all of a sudden turn into say like a hemangiosarcoma or a mast cell tumor. But that's where we need to test it with a fine needle aspirate, which is a non-invasive procedure any veterinarian can do. And typically we can look under the microscope at that time, see if there's certain cells and then diagnose what this mass is. is. So if it's a mast cell tumor, we're gonna see mast cells. It looks very different under the microscope than a lipoma. So you need to be doing that. You need to ensure that they've done that. And I've had the hard part with lipomas is that they're on usually heavier dogs. And when we do a fine needle aspirate, we are going, we are going through fat. So we are going to pick up fat cells. So if you feel like it's growing or it's changing, get it assessed. If it's changing and you've already had it assessed and they said lipoma and it's growing and you're just concerned, get it checked again. I've, I've seen misdiagnosis and it can happen because of that. We go through the fat. Um, I have a patient we're currently treating that has, they thought it was a lipoma and it's actually a soft tissue sarcoma, which is more aggressive. It doesn't go internally, but it's very aggressive locally. And some lipomas will be more invasive so they can go in, into deeper muscles, they can be deeply attached, so they're not this freely movable uh, mass. Now Sherry, our lymphoma is painful. So this is a great question. Um, and I don't know if you mean lymphoma or lipoma. So lymphoma is the internal cancers where the, the lymph nodes get large. So they, you feel the little lumps and bumps where lymph nodes are. So the submandibular, we have our prescapular and then check there's other lymph nodes all over the body but these are going to be the ones that swell up the fastest or get enlarged the soonest and then the ones behind the knees so the popliteal um pets i wouldn't say are painful but they're uncomfortable they don't feel good so um you just don't feel good and that's kind of how dogs they look blah they don't feel good um if you're talking about lipomas and them being painful 
usually they're not. However, they can get really big and then they can become uncomfortable for the pet. They can inhibit mobility, inhibit movement. If you can imagine having like a 10 pound lump just kind of hanging from you, there's going to be extra pressure on the back, the joints. So it can be uncomfortable, but they're not, they're not painful. So I, I hope that answers your question. So what can we do? Talked about food. I brought some supplements. I don't have a ton of supplements in my house. Um, we used a lot for Finn who had cancer um, and our cats also had cancer, not skin lumps and bumps. They had internal cancers, but we can use nutraceuticals. We can use things like antioxidants. We can use medicinal mushrooms to help these pets. And we, the goal, get them metabolizing and utilizing their nutrients from their food by feeding them optimal foods. So make sure you go to our blog posts, go to our YouTube channel. So at the naturalpetdoctor.com, there's lots of videos on how to pick an optimal diet. We're actually doing a webinar on Monday how to choose the best food for your pet. We're covering kibbles, we're covering brands, we're covering how to make a home cooked diet. So go to our website, thenaturalpetdoctor.com and register. You're gonna learn that. That's what we're covering. And that will work for any condition, any prevention. Yes, there's things that we change depending on conditions, but it's a great foundation for helping your pet. So getting them on that base for optimal health. And then what we look at, antioxidants. We know there's something off. There's inflammation in the body. How do we fight that? So we can use supplements. So antioxidants that we can use, um, so it just depends. Like a lot of times with cancer patients, we'll put them on vitamin E, which is a great antioxidant. They're going to be on fish oils, omega-3 fatty acids. Typically, we have to be a little bit careful if a pet has what we call that dampness, that inflammation, those lipomas, because they may not tolerate higher doses of omega-3s. So that's where working with your veterinarian is essential for ensuring they're on the right dose, that it's working the best for them. But when we put them on omega-3s, we need to put them on an antioxidant. So we need vitamin E to help with that. So I will usually put patients on vitamin E also, especially when we're using higher doses of omega-3s. And then we look at medicinal mushrooms. So I brought up a couple products and there are so many out there. Um, we talk a lot about using reishi, your turkey tail, get, like your Ganoderma. And I use those for certain types of cancers. And then I'll use blends when we're looking at how do we support the immune health overall. I have a couple products from Earth Buddy because they have a range of products. They're typically like, I thought of them as a CBD company and they have other options to support GI health. They have medicinal mushrooms. So I thought this was really cool to showcase what some companies are doing. So for this one, this is a mushroom and hemp product. So it's called Focus and Immune. It's from Earth Buddy and what what's really neat about this so it's an adaptogenic blend so adaptogens are going to work in the body where they're needed for our immune systems in overdrive adaptogen adaptogenic herbs will help calm it down if our immune system is too low adaptogenic herbs will shift it up really cool plant compounds and i use them all the time for my patients and so this has an organic mushroom blend we have turkey tail lion's mane reishi cordyceps um, agaricon. And then also what they've done is they've combined it with the CBD product. So CBD and hemp are the same thing. It's not the same as THC, which causes your pet to have to be high. So cannabis is CBD plus hemp plus a lot of other things because the plant is the whole compound. So there's a lot of synergistic chemicals, plant compounds, chemical constituents working together. So what they do is they extract out the CBD and we utilize that for things. There's a lot of studies coming out of CSU about uh, seizures, osteoarthritis, um, using it for cancer, uh, appetite stimulants. A lot of times we need to add in THC. Don't recommend doing that on your own because you can make your pet sick. But CBD is definitely in front of our face and we need to use products that are high quality 
because there's a lot of poor quality ones. Earth Buddies one, Vet CS. So this is just a CBD hemp product by itself. So use this all the time with our senior cat and also with Finn. Like that was a mainstay of his treatment protocol for his brain tumor and helping with seizures, inflammation, osteoarthritis. But what's neat when we combine these together, so what we're gaining is we're using medicinal mushrooms, we're using products that have antioxidants, we're using the CBD hemp products for reducing inflammation and supporting the immune system. And these medicinal mushrooms can have different properties so we can use different ones for different things. So turkey tail is really common for hemangiosarcomas. There's a lot of research that actually shows that it's helped pets live longer, longer than just chemotherapy alone. It's amazing, like the studies that are coming out for that. The other one I wanted to show you, because we talk about gut health. How do we support microbiome? How do we feed the good bacteria in the gut? And so this is, of course, we need to make sure we're feeding right diet or best diet that you can feed to optimize gut health. And then we need to be looking at, okay, how do I continue to help the, the gut health? If we have lumps and bumps, we know there's an imbalance, there's probably leaky gut, we need to reduce inflammation. One of the really good products that does that is colostrum. So we did a social media post on this past week on colostrum, and this is the first milk the mother produces after giving birth to the calf. It is full of immunoglobulins and other uh, prop, prop, it has other amazing properties that help the immune system health, reduce inflammation. We can use it for all sorts of different diseases. So the other one, so this is another, I have a lot of Earth Buddy in my house. So Earth Buddy Gut Health. So this is a colostrum based product. Make sure everyone can see it. It has hemp in it also, so CBD for its anti-inflammatory effects. The colostrum is boosting the GI health, helping with leaky gut, reducing inflammation. And then there's also blueberries in it. I talk about blueberries all the time because I love them for myself, for my health. They're really great additions into your pet's food because they have antioxidants. They also help with anxiety. There's all sorts of things we can use food for. Remember, food therapy. So this has blueberries in it also, which I love. So not only do we have grass-fed, that is key, we want our cows eating grass, not being fed grains, so that they're producing optimal milk products, the immunoglobulins, they don't have any pesticides, things like that, in, in the product that we're using. So this colostrum, Colostrum is a great product. And then we also have our CBD, and then we have organic blueberry powder. So this is a really cool product. And guess what? All the people who have registered for my webinar are going in the drawing for this product. That's why I have it in my hands, because it's going to one of you amazing pet parents on Monday when I announce it at the webinar. So make sure you register for the webinar, because this could be yours, and it's good for any pet. That's the neat thing. Um, it's, you want to just help prevent disease. Put your pet on this. It's not going to harm them. That's what I love about it. So those three products I wanted to showcase um, and let you guys know about that. So biggest takeaways from today, like you need to be looking at, okay, lumps and bumps. It's not just a lump or a bump. It's a sign of an imbalance. Make sure that you're getting those lumps and bumps checked out by the veterinarian, not just monitor it. You can, once we know that it's a benign mass, and it's small, it's not causing any issues, get that fine needle aspirate done, non-invasive procedure, you will have so much more at peace to knowing that this is just a lipoma. So get that checked out at the vet clinic. And then look at the food that you're feeding your pet. Check out our blog posts on the naturalpetdoctor.com. Register for our webinar that we have on Monday. And if you can't be there live, you get a replay for three days. So you can watch it when you do have time. And then you go in the drawing to get this amazing gut health product. So look at your pet's diet and then also look at where are there potentially holes for you to fill in with using supplements, nutri nutraceuticals, CBD products, medicinal mushrooms. What things can we use topically? We touched a little bit on essential oils. Uh, our essential oils are in our natural pet tribe or the webinars are all in our natural pet tribe. So if you wanna catch those, join. You get access to everything. 
And then of course, Debbie, here's another question. So post your questions too, um, if you have questions about what I just talked about. Can you post links for those products, please? Yes, I'll post some links underneath this. Um, Earth Buddy, there's some discount, like you get discounts, which is really cool. So I will send that to you. And then also Debbie, you asked, how do I register for the webinar? Go to the naturalpetdoctor.com. There's a bar at the top. You'll see a pop-up also. If you're still having trouble, send me a message at info at the naturalpetdoctor.com. Do not worry, we will get you registered if you wanna be there with us. Sue, Sammy has two cysts. The vet aspirated, they're fine, perfect. The vet wants to cut them out. Depends on what they're doing, where they're at. Biggest thing, so if cysts are just sitting there, they're not doing anything. They're not breaking open, causing infection. They're not inhibiting mobility. The pet isn't just gnawing on them too. So if it, if it's irritant to your pet, like an irritating to your pet, they're going to chew at it. They're going to scratch at it. They're going to bite at it. So if you're seeing those signs, you do want to remove it. Now, if they're just wanting to remove it, to remove it, to think that it's gone, I would say optimize diet first, get them on supplements to improve immune health because not only is that going to help them if they need to have surgery, they'll recover faster. There's a lot that you can do there. Um, but I would do that first. And then you're creating the better environment in the body so that more cysts don't pop up. There's not a guarantee that they won't because there's a lot of things in the environment, toxins. We're exposed to things all day, every day. We can't control all that. Right now in Colorado, it is so smoky. Like it's a toxin. I'm inhaling it, unfortunately. There's nothing I can do other than to support my immune system by eating the right diets, by taking my supplements, by using things like curcumin to reduce inflammation. There's all sorts of things we can do to optimize the body. So I'd say do that first, unless they are causing a problem, then we, I would recommend getting rid of them surgically and then looking at how do we keep these from coming back. And then also definitely check out some of those website or the little brief clips that we've done on our blog posts about essential oils and using those topically. Um, so Joanne has a, okay, my dog has a small cyst on top of her head. They checked. It was benign. Should I be concerned because it's on the top of her head? So Joanne, it, they can pop up anywhere. And one of the things I look at when I'm looking at pets, so when I see them in an in-person consultation is I can look at where these bumps are along the meridians of the body which is so cool. So looking at it from a Chinese medicine perspective and if it's sitting, you know, right here, or if it's sitting on a certain spot, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's, you know, there's, we've got like something right here. We've got the point on yin tong, or we've got a point along the liver meridian or the bladder line. It could be along where the kidneys are. And it can actually indicate that there is a problem with the underlying organ. So working with an integrative doctor or a holistic vet that can partner with your conventional vet if they don't do all the conventional things like i don't do the surgeries i don't do a lot of the conventional side but partnering with people can be huge because we can find underlying issues and resolve those using chinese herbal medicine so it's not necessarily a concern where it's at but it can give us information and then Kristen, great question. How often do you need to do additional fine needle aspirates for rechecking lipoma? So I would say if you've gotten it checked, it looks like it is most likely a lipoma. If you're noticing it growing, I'd probably get it checked every single year at the wellness if it's not changing. Now, if it's changing, you wanna get it checked out sooner. Um, but like I said before, I've seen things be mis, I'm not saying it is a misdiagnosis, but I've seen them be misdiagnosed and that sucks. Like you, there's nothing we can do. Like I've seen fat cells and you're like, you know what, let's just, let's not keep poking the dog, but let's recheck it in a month. So that's something that I would say once a year at the wellness exam, if nothing's changing, just have them do a fine needle aspirate. If things are growing and changing and they're changing fast, I would just get your pet in sooner and get it rechecked. Um, Shauna. Yes. So fizzy has a few little pinkish wart moles that have popped up in the last couple of years. So other vets said it's normal, nothing to worry about. So do you often see these little moles in older pets? So those are probably your sebaceous cysts that I was discussing at the start. And this will repost. So Shauna, definitely go back and watch the replay. Those are a sign of imbalance. And we know with Fizzy, so Fizzy is one of my amazing patients. 
we know there's issues. There's some, there's a lot of things going on in the, in her little body. And so that's, where we're working on how do we help those imbalances using the herbs, using the supplements. Fizzy's on an amazing diet. That's really helping her kidney issues. So there's so many things that we can do now, if they're not breaking open, they're not getting infected. They're, she's not bothering them. She's not scratching, chewing at them. Just monitor them, especially with her. So I would not recommend surgery to remove those for her. So if she has any problems with some of the like little lumps and bumps, if she's under anesthesia for her dental, uh, then maybe if it doesn't add much time on, they could potentially remove that at the same time. So she doesn't have to have another anesthesia. And then Sherry, if a chihuahua has a hard lump on their soft spot, should, I am not sure what that means, unfortunately. So a hard lump on their soft spot, should I seek medical care? I would say definitely go to your vet and get them checked out. So any changes, anything you're concerned with, it's always better. Get peace of mind. If it's a lipoma, um, just get it checked out. So that way you're not worrying about it. And hopefully, most likely, it's nothing to worry about. All right, so I hope everyone found that really helpful. Make sure you register for our pet food webinar, how to choose the best food for your pet. We are covering both dogs and cats. So there will be sections for both. So they are getting equal attention during that webinar because it's really important to get our pets on the right path with the right foods and you're gonna have options because not everyone can do a home cooked food or buy the pre-made organic home cooked foods that come in packages. So we're covering it all. I'm gonna give you brands that I would recommend if you need to feed kibbles, give you different options and you go in the drawing to win this. So definitely register at thenaturalpetdoctor.com. I look forward to seeing you all there and I can't wait. I'm so excited for this webinar because I love talking about food. Next week, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. I had these mixed up. I think last time I said we were going to cover urinary things, but next week we're covering urinary concerns and we're going to be talking about those cats that like to pee outside the litter tray, those cats that are super stressed. How do we help them? How do we help calm them down? So make sure you jump on that. I'll probably go into dogs too. You know how I am. I like covering everything and giving you all the things. If you need help with nutrition, you need a personalized consultation, check out our nutritional plans. Partner with everyone, no matter where you are in the world. Have a fantastic weekend. Thank you for being here. Appreciate all of you. This is Dr. Katie Woodley, the naturalpetdoctor.com.